Hello and welcome to the Pulse of Spokane. My name is Emmett Rice. I'm your host for the day. I'm joined by Dave, Alan Smith and David Larson. We're going to talk about the live artist series that you guys are putting on and performing in. Uh, so tell me about why you wanted to start a live artist series and kind of the genesis of this project or the motivations behind it. Well, basically, uh, you know, people would come in and uh, played in bands and there's no place to play. And uh, they were just you know, bored to death. And so we decided, well, let's just put up a stage right in the middle of the uh, store and uh, do live stream. Absolutely. And as a musician yourself, obviously with COVID, like you mentioned, there's a uh, kind of this, you know, need for live music. And I'm sure as an artist yourself, you want to be playing shows right now. What was kind of the draw to be one of the people performing on this series? Uh, well, I'm a frequent uh, customer at Hoffman's Music, where is, which is where we uh, perform these uh, streamed concerts. And, um, you know, you, you bring in your instrument for a pair, you're buying a box of reeds, but then you kind of realize it's like it's just going home and, and individual practice and you're not really kind of creating. And, and having that opportunity to create, it was interesting talking to the other musicians who played with me on that very first one. Because everybody, like when I said, hey, I have a, a gig in public, they were like, wow, you know, because at that time it was December. And so we'd all been out of work. I hadn't done a gig in public since probably June or May. And it'd just been forever since we'd actually been out in public because, you know, recording is fun. Videos are fun. But there's something really different when you're in a room with people and you're interacting and and, you know, sometimes it's not as polished, but at the same time, sometimes it's just got a lot more energy and excitement. And that's just something that we've all been missing terribly is just it, it just feels so complacent sitting there playing at my microphone in my home studio, recording parts after parts to put on YouTube videos, because uh, that was about all I could do during COVID to put out music because it was just so hard to get people in the same room. So definitely. And there's obviously a big draw for audiences. I think, you know, Spokane community has a great music scene here a lot of kind of like independent uh music scenes a couple of different venues for mm -hmm. that um what do you think like the draw for the audience is in terms of these kind of more creative uh i guess gigs or concerts that uh we're able to put on that covid's kind of forced us to go into well when you're uh, sitting at home looking for something to do and uh, you can get on Facebook or Instagram and, you know, watch a Spokane band and listen to their music and gives you something to do. Absolutely. Is it, uh, is it mostly Spokane based artists or? So far it has been all Spokane based and all doing their own, uh, their own music. Yeah. And then putting on the series, what's kind of been, uh, has it been easy to get, get or get guests or musicians to come on? Yeah, we uh, put out a, a post on uh, Facebook, and it was amazing how many people were just right there on top of it. Definitely. And uh, obviously, the series has been going on for a while. What are uh, are there any things you're looking to expand about in the series, or maybe make it bigger? Um, you know, uh, it, it, as much room as we have, uh, you know, we can expand the stage a little bit and contract it. Um, I also plan on doing a little bit of it on uh, Saturdays, uh, getting some of the uh, high school uh, bands to come in and uh, play, give them something to do. Definitely. You know, other than just being in class. Sure. And David, you had mentioned earlier, obviously you got tired of, you know, setting up your mic and live streaming from, mm -hmm. you know, a chair in your house. What are, uh, what are some of the things that this series can offer that, you know, maybe you can't stream from your own house or maybe put on independently i mean part of it is just it it's the appearance of legitimacy you know like anybody can stream from their house right you can set up your webcam in your bedroom and away you go but being in a place with even though there's not really an audience but there's there's you know the people at the store and everything and it and it adds that kind of air of sort of importance to it and it and there's just something magical about playing in front of people um, and and partly going back to just the discussion of why we should have this 
you know, Netflix is fine, but I think all of us in this pandemic have realized the limitations of streaming content into the house. I, it, it's the same thing, right? You've seen every formula, you've seen every kind of incarnation of YouTube video, and just gives you something that's tangible and, and you know, it's as close to reality as we can get at this point. And so it just, that's kind of part of it is just that air of legitimacy, legitimacy, putting on nice clothes, loading up the gear in the car, meeting people down there. And it, yeah, it just, it adds a lot to it. And, and especially for uh, on my performance coming up tomorrow at 5 p.m., um, it, the band is super excited. I, I don't think I've ever rehearsed this much for a gig in years because everybody just wanted to do a great job because they're so excited to, we get to play. And yeah, it just, it, it kind of reminds you of maybe like your first gig ever because you're just like so jazzed to get out there and play some music, so. Definitely. And I guess this is kind of a question for both of you, but I think COVID has obviously forced us all in a lot of ways to get largely more creative in terms of kind of like technical aspects or how we can put on events like this. Uh, and obviously that lends itself to being, to there being a lot of possible kind of technical difficulties or especially in a series like this, you know, there's, you're working with video quality, you're working with audio quality. So for both of you, how do the, how do these challenges bring themselves to you and how do you have to work out kind of the challenges of doing an online live stream? Well, we've never actually done video before, at least I haven't. And uh, getting that set up and getting it to look right and getting the lights to look right has been a, a little bit of a challenge. And then, of course, when you're, when you're listening to it and then you're listening to it come back from, uh, say, Facebook, it's, you know, there's a bit of delay there and that's, uh, getting the audio and the video at the same time has been challenging. Definitely. Yeah, I, I'm a I'm a big tech head. Um, I teach at Spokane Falls Community College. I've been doing my own recordings and video videography. I actually used to run a video production business before I moved to Spokane, and I decided I wanted to be more of an artist and less of a technician when I got here. But long story short is it just it reminded me how much stuff it takes to do this right like all the gear and the microphones. And then you got to think about all the codecs and how is your connection speed and all these things. Um, and it was, it, it was just quite, it's so daunting and, and you can do it, you know, you can just set your cell phone on the table and you can do it, which is great. But if you really want to do it like the professionals do, it just, it was, it's such a huge thing. And it, it just kind of reminded me of all that work I used to do and how much, kind of on top of it you have to be and especially when it's live because then you have to have the extra people to run the sound mixer and to run the cameras and all these things and yeah it, it's to me it's I would love to be able to play music without these kind of extra hurdles because man it's it's a lot it's just such a huge undertaking and in a way I don't want to say it removes the fun but boy it, it would be great to just show up at the club set up your stuff and play and not have to worry about all the technical stuff yeah I'm sure it required a lot of trial and error at the beginning it's, yeah probably yeah. the biggest thing that we've had is you get everything all set up and you're ready to go and then you type in to get on Facebook and it's it's not coming up and it's like okay what do we need to do right yeah and I guess this is a question for both of you again but um as a music store or working in a music store and obviously being a instrumental instructor, as you said, it seems I, I'm a musician myself and I play guitar and drums and stuff. And I also skateboard. So I've seen in both of those, like my two favorite hobbies, especially in during the coronavirus, there's been just a massive influx of people wanting to pick up those activities because there's something that you can do by yourself. You can do at home. You don't need to be out with other people. Have you guys seen an influx of people wanting to start picking up instruments or coming into the store with questions about how they can even get started? Uh, yeah, when it first came out, it was amazing. We'd get whole families in there wanting to learn how to play guitar together. And uh, that we've, well, we've been having troubles keeping guitars in stock. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, and for me, um, it, in a weird way, I, I think it just kind of, it picked up and it slowed down because 
people who hadn't done it before maybe had the time to think about it. And so I got contacted by several people. I had one uh, person who found me through my online content and he just tracked me down and he sent me a message and he's like, man, could you help me play this one particular song? I'm a long haul trucker. And I said, well, you know, like I, I'd love to help you, but this is this may be a little difficult for a quick message on on Instagram or whatever. But yeah, I mean, there was there was that element. But then there was also I, I just knew a lot of professional musicians who not that they gave up, but they just kind of like they threw in the towel. They're just like, oh, why am I practicing? There's no work to be had, you know. About June of last year, everybody was pretty sure they weren't going to be working for a while, and so it was it was this weird thing where it kind of like there was a lot of interest brewing, but then like some of the seasoned pros I know that I mean they stopped teaching private lessons because they're like I don't want to deal with masks. I had one uh, friend who um, the kid's parents brought him to the lesson kind of knowing that they had been exposed to COVID, but they were like, meh. And then lo and behold, you know, the kid got COVID, the teacher got COVID, the, the teacher's family got COVID. And it just, and it was one of those things where it really discouraged a lot of people. So it was a weird kind of up and down in my perspective of like people who didn't want to come out to the college to play in the band. Cause like, nope, don't want to be around this. And other people were like, you're doing live music. I'm there. Cause they just had to play. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And I've heard from artists that I know that, you know, during this time, it's uh, it's almost like a daunting thing asking to people or asking people to come to one of your shows, you know, yeah, risking themselves being exposed to the virus. It's kind of a hard thing to ask, which is why I think this live music series is great, because as you said, there's a live audience in the Hoffman Music Store and also that option for online. I think that's great. Yeah, no, and, and I have a lot of friends who they've turned down work, you know, since COVID happened because they didn't want to be the pariah. They didn't want to be the person who said, oh, you know, it's fine. And then they go do a gig and something happens. And 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 I totally respect that. I've, I've been really open with people about my level of comfort. And I, you know, if the state says it's a no go, then that's just the way it is. And yeah, it, it does give people that option, which I think is great. Sure. And in putting on this series, how do you think it reflects the Spokane music community in general or the scene here? Not, I don't know. I'm not sure. It doesn't? How. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I just think there's, in Spokane especially, we have such a great music scene that there's a want for live music or just kind of that smaller community-based thing where, you know, you don't have to go to a big show at the Spokane Arena, but rather you can see a local artist in whichever way you prefer to watch yeah, you can you can have popcorn in your own house and <laughs> yeah. uh, decide what you want to drink and uh, absolutely sit there in your slippers and uh, well one of the things i've noticed from watching the other artists who've performed in the series other than myself is like there were just people like um maybe it was two weeks ago or last week or whatever but there was a woman playing vibraphone and singing with with uh, and uh, the drummer and i didn't catch their relation uh whether they're friends husband wife don't know but but it was just kind of like where did that come from that's kind of like this exciting thing where you know I, i'm a i'm a jazz musician and i play a lot of instrumental jazz and things but i think there's it's hard when you play an alternative style of music if there's not a place where you can express that. Because like you said, the Spokane Arena, you know, I can't book the Spokane Arena to do a jazz quartet gig. That's that's never going to work. But having a place where you can actually do that art is kind of special because these are the things that I think as a musical community we need is so that, you know, let's say you're a classical saxophone or a classical string quartet. I mean, you need a place to be able to play that wonderful music. And if nobody's providing that venue, where does that music go? And so that was something I thought was really cool is it, you know, it wasn't just, oh, here's five guys who are all singer songwriters playing guitar. It, there's actual variety and interest in there. And I thought that was a, a real healthy part of this. Yeah, that's one thing we've tried to do is, uh, you know, we at first, you know, we thought, well, we're just going to do singer songwriter, acoustic guitar make it easy but uh you know we've had a uh, uh, couple of people come up we've had uh, uh quartets mm -hmm. um we're uh we're gonna do uh five piece uh rock bands mm -hmm. uh country uh we've got one band that is a uh celtic uh scandinavian mm -hmm. folk group um well, like you said, uh, we had uh, Rosie, 
and uh, I think it was her boyfriend uh, that was playing drums, and you know she played vibes and sang and something I'd never seen before. Yeah, it was yeah. very good. Sounds like there's a lot of variety coming out of the series. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the upcoming shows we can be excited about? Obviously, David, you're playing tomorrow at five. Who are you playing with? So, yeah, tomorrow I'm playing with a quartet uh, myself. Uh, Brendan McMurphy is going to be playing trumpet. Um, I'll be playing baritone saxophone. Uh, we have Skylar Garvin playing drums and Cole Rosea playing bass. And we're going to be doing some original jazz pieces as well as an homage to the music of Jerry Mulligan, which I recently released an album of his music um, that's gotten some really great international play so far. Um, and yeah, we just, uh, I'm a scholar of Jerry Mulligan's music, so it's kind of nice to share that because one of his most famous groups was a pianoless quartet like we are, where it was baritone sax, trumpet, bass, and drums. And so we're emulating that, but as well as bringing our, some of our original music to the, to the forefront. Um, it's also exciting too, because two of those members, uh, myself and Brendan, were faculty at Spokane Falls Community College. And then the other two are actually students from Spokane Falls Community College. So we get to have this nice little mixture of not just representing the college's faculty, but also the student population as well, who are still making music through all this stuff. So we're pretty excited about it. Yeah, that's awesome. And after that, uh, on the 25th, we have uh, Erin Parks. She uh, plays acoustic and uh, singer-songwriter. And then uh, Heather King, she's got a uh, kind of a rock new country uh, band. Uh, Lonesome uh, Lyle Morris does uh, blues and uh, Buffalo Jones, very good band. Uh, then Deep Roots, I mentioned them before, they're a Celtic band. Uh, there's uh, Robert uh, Gould, he's a uh, rock, country, and blues. And uh, then the uh, Blues Disco, they do uh, indie rock. Cool. Wow. Well, it sounds like there's a lot to be excited for, obviously. Well, and how can people watch the show? Uh, they can watch it on uh, Facebook. Uh, go to uh, Hoffman Music Store on Facebook. They can watch it there. It comes on at 5 to 6. Um, it's uh, two uh, Thursdays a month. Cool. Yeah, well, I'm sure our audience will uh, definitely be excited to watch it. I think there's a real thirst for live music right now. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. No problem. And thank you. Yeah, we really appreciate you having on the show. And thanks to everyone on our audience for watching another episode of The Pulse of Spokane. We'll see you next time. The economy is getting stronger, banks are lending again, and interest rates are at historic lows. Now is a great time to buy your dream home. The caring and knowledgeable professionals at Homes for You have been helping people just like you for over 20 years. They take the time to listen to what you want and will help you find just the right home in Washington or Idaho. Real estate is what we do at Homes for You, 928-5782, or visit online at homes, the number four, youspokane.com. This is River Ridge Frame Shop called Frame It Today, where we can take your art, customize it, and get it ready to hang on the wall. here at River Ridge Hardware, 2803 West Garland. Weather in the inland northwest can wear you down. And if your gutters are in poor condition or you do not have gutters, you could suffer damage that could cost a fortune to fix. Rain Man Seamless Rain Gutters has almost 30 years of professional experience in serving the inland northwest region and strives to ensure customer service that is second to none from the time you call to the end of the project. Thanks for watching this episode of The Pulse. We are where you are. Check us out on any of these other platforms as well as our website. This show is sponsored by Local 29 Firefighters Union, Homes for You, and Apex Cannabis.